Well, I think Afghanistan is, is currently facing one of the biggest and worst humanitarian disasters in the world. Uh, and, and almost half of the population are suffering from, from hunger and starvation. And I think Afghanistan urgently needs um, humanitarian aid. Uh, I mean, since the, Taliban, since the Taliban took control, nine million children are suffering from famine now. And uh, people, people are selling their, their kidneys just to survive. People are selling their babies because of extreme poverty and starvation. I mean, the banking system collapsed, so access to cash is no longer available. And at the same time, people, people don't have uh, any, any confidence in, in what's happening in the future. And this is all because of the sanctions that have been put in place by the international community because the Taliban is running the country. Yeah, but and, because the Taliban are running the country, there's this reticence from the international community to fund because they don't know where the funds will end up. They give them to the Taliban, they then have to trust the Taliban to distribute them where they need to go. Yeah, exactly. And that's why the aid has been suspended and the assets have been frozen. And I think that's a really important point that you've made, which is, do we give money to a country that is that, to a country where the government is run by the Taliban or not? And this is the biggest problem that the people are so facing. Do we? Do we? And, and that's the issue, because on the one hand, people, millions of people are suffering because the world doesn't want to give money to a country where the Taliban is in control. But at the same time, if we don't give the money, then also millions of people will be suffering. So I think looking at the future, there needs to be an election where in, in the mid to long term, so we can determine what the legitimate form of government will be. I mean, the people haven't been consulted. Um, the people didn't democratically choose the Taliban. I also think that the Taliban don't have the capacity or the skills to run the country in the long term. You know, members of the Afghan diaspora living outside the country need to be given the chance to, to go back and to shape the rebuilding of the country. But, but, I mean, this is all hypothetical. This is Clyde Cuckoo. I mean, the Taliban's not going to roll over and say, yeah, we'll relinquish power to a wider diaspora. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's why I think they, need to, they must be held accountable for what's going oh, to happen in the oh, future. Oh, oh, because oh. if we're going to support them financially, yeah. then they have to understand that they can't continue what they've been doing no, in the past. And that's why they've got to be held accountable. But how do you hold them accountable? Um, how we hold them accountable is through the institutions like the United Nations and the World Bank, for example. You know, women's rights ha has to improve. The situation of ethnic minorities has to improve. I mean, just yesterday, a, a shopkeeper, innocent shopkeeper in the north of Kabul was gunned down by the Taliban. Journalists are still being imprisoned. Ex-Afghan officials are still in prison. Children as young as 12 years old are still in prison. And, and that's why I think, you know, forced marriages are still happening. Mm. So if, but then at the, the tricky, the tricky question is the Taliban shouldn't feel like they can do whatever they want to do just because the international community feel pressured to support the people of Afghanistan. No, of course. And look, Darius, you obviously were born in Afghanistan and you fled the country because of troubles. Well, I don't know how old you are. Uh, go on, give us a clue. 23. Right, 23 years ago. So there have been historic problems in this country. But you have now been shaped by the UK where you've grown up. You believe in democracy. You think it can work. We've seen time and again that it doesn't work in, in Afghanistan. I mean, we tried, didn't we? The Western Alliance tried to instill democracy in a, in a country where that's just not something that comes naturally. Is it ever going to be able to be sorted out? I, I wonder if you are able to see things the way many people in Afghanistan would see things. Well, I think the UK has been instrumental in supporting Afghanistan since 2001. We had so many achievements as a result of the sacrifices of British troops, the support of the UK government in promoting civil society, improving women's participation in politics, improving the education of girls, and also the, the reconstruction of the country as a whole. I mean, you can't compare Afghanistan today with before 2001. We had so much progress. But then the, when, when NATO withdrew from Afghanistan in, in August, September last year, that's when the situation completely changed. So I don't think it's impossible for demo, democracy to... To, to, for, for Afghanistan to become a democratic society. But now... But yeah. I mean, it was, it, was, it was possible because you had Western troops around the edges patrolling. As soon as there was any hint that troops would, would leave the country, it fell very, very quickly. Everyone was surprised at how rapidly the Taliban took control again. Well, I don't think democracy is something that can happen overnight. It's a long process. I mean, the reason why the UK is so democratic and developed is because the process has taken hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm. 20 years is not enough. Mm for Afghanistan to become perfect. 
But then looking at the future, I think there needs to be a change in the political system as well. As I, as I touched upon earlier, the people haven't been consulted as to what they want. The situation of ethnic groups is still very, very fragmented. And that's why, personally, I believe that, you know, an example of having free trade zones could be a good example for Afghanistan, which can attract, you know, British investment, British companies in different parts of the country. Politically speaking, maybe devolution of power to specific zones um, can also be a good idea because centralized power in Afghanistan, as we've seen in the past, didn't work. Mm -hmm.